Welcome back to Pro Camera versus YouTuber Camera, where we're gonna take a very expensive, professional featured camera and see how it compares to a similarly priced YouTuber, you, I quote, YouTuber camera. Today we've got two Canon bodies that are both actually quite feature stacked in their own right. First, we've got the Canon XA50. Now this is a camcorder that has basically everything you could ever want built right into it. It's even, got, it's even got the darn kitchen sink installed in this darn thing. It's under one of the hidden menu settings. On the other hand, we've got one of the new divisive darlings of the last few year, the Canon EOS R. Now it does most everything you could want with a few caveats, but it is one of the simplest and easiest cameras to work with that I've ever owned. Which one of these would work best for the online content creator? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Before we get started, Yep, I'm totally aware that these are two separate types of cameras. And yes, it's not necessarily an apples to apples comparison. Oh well. Also, I would like to thank my friends over at B&H Photo for loaning me this XA50 for the past few weeks so I can make this series of videos. If you'd like to get your very own, or heck, even this EOS R will have its own, there will be links in the description below. And you know what, let's actually, let's throw these two cameras up on the sticks so they can be both the primary and the B-cam for the rest of the video. There we go, now we are on the two cameras. Now I actually really like both of these cameras separately for the things they do, which makes this video awesome because they both clock in right around the same price point. So if you find yourself looking for a camera to make online content, these two might just be at the top of your list, except the camcorder. Camcorders, I, for some reason, people on YouTube don't like them. I really like them because they do, I mean, they do spend their hardware dollars differently though. But, so let's do a quick specs overview of the two cameras in case you've never even heard about the XA50, which if you haven't, there's a, here's a link, ding, for a dedicated video on it. The Canon EOS R is a full frame mirrorless camera with a 30.3 megapixel CMOS sensor, and it can record in up to 4K 30 frames per second and 1080p in up to 60 frames per second. It does have slow motion of 720p at 120 frames per second and has both a flip screen and a microphone in jack. Now the big spec penalty that I'm gonna hit the EOS R with is that the 4K recording mode, you get hit with a hefty crop of 1.8, making this have a more aggressive crop than some APS-C cameras. The XA50, on the other hand, is a pro camcorder with an 8 megapixel CMOS sensor. It can also record up to 4K 30 frames per second. Its slow motion is only 1080p at 60, which is kind of disappointing. It does have a flip screen and a microphone in jack, but in a huge advantage, it comes included with a top handle that has two XLR ports on top of it, meaning you can get some great audio. What's it sound like? Now let's break this down to size by comparing them against the four most important video camera aspects ever. 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 First up, video quality. Like we mentioned, the EOS R is really a hybrid stills slash video camera, and it can do 4K, but that huge crop is its absolutely the worst thing about the EOS R. If I could just snap my fingers and change one single thing about this camera, I would let it use a bigger portion of the sensor. Maybe not no crop, but just so something. Like this is a wide angle lens and we're at like a standard length right now doing 4K. But if you want to record in a less strenuous codec, you can get some of the best looking 1080p I've ever gotten. And that does use the full width of the sensor. Yes, the XA50 also has awesome 1080p, but it's 4K does not have an additional crop on top of that. Now, I do say additional, I mean, there is some focal ranges and sensor size math that's going on there to give you the final equivalent of focal range, blah, blah, blah. What matters is while you use the 4K, you don't have an additional crop, you get access to the dual pixel autofocus. You wouldn't imagine that that would be that big of a problem because the additional processing power when using a one inch sensor as opposed to a full frame sensor, uh, the depth of field, I assume there's less calculations or there's less sensor math that has to happen, but this does have dual pixel autofocus in 4K, which is, I mean, they both do, which is great. What I want you to consider though is this, while the XA50 is a more pro featured video recording camera with its built-in ND, stabilization, XLR inputs, dual card slots, etc., it's quote unquote strongest picture profile is the wide dynamic range, which is great. We're recording with it right now and I have been pleased with the quality I get, but it doesn't have Canon log. C log is Canon's log profile that allows you to get more dynamic range out of your sensor. The XA50 doesn't have it, 
but the USR does, and that's really a big coup with the USR. I've never really tried log footage before because it's got that gross gray sheen over everything, and you have to manually grade it afterwards, which, I mean, you don't on wide dynamic range, by the way. But since I've been using C-Log, I mean, we're using it right now, uh, I use it everywhere all the time because it's just, I really like how it turns out later, and it's not that, I wouldn't consider it grading. I just move the blacks down, I move the middles down, and I move the highlights up a little bit. And it looks great, but both of these cameras, I'm getting really excited today. Both of these cameras, just they look, they look awesome. The image quality you can get out of both is fantastic. If you are into the whole shallow depth of field thing, the obvious advantage goes to the EOS R. Having a sensor that dwarfs the XA50, I mean, it's not even close. You can actually blur out the background at wider focal ranges because of that bigger sensor and the lenses you can get, you know, lenses are important because you can use all of Canon's RF and EF lenses with an adapter. And you can even get an adapter with ND built into it, negating one of the pro camera's strongest selling points. I mean, it's very, very expensive and I don't have it because I just use cheap ND filters, but however, technical image quality only gets you so far. And another big difference between the two is in the audio recording capabilities. Like we mentioned earlier, the XA50 has two XLR adapters connected with its top handle, which will let you record some really clean and crisp audio, which like we said earlier, that's how we're recording the audio for this video since we switched the cameras. I've got an AT875R plugged straight into the camcorder and it sounds really good. The USR though is no slouch when it comes to recording audio either. Despite it being a hybrid stills camera, it does have a microphone in port and headphone out jack, which while not capable of providing phantom power to microphones like the XA50 can, it can use powered microphones like the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus to great extent. So it's good, it's not great. The internal preamps I'm not even gonna say are coming close to this because they're not, but they're perfectly usable. But let's throw some microphones on these cameras and hop outside real quick for a video slash vlogging test. <laughs> and welcome to the vlogging test of the Canon EOS R and the Canon XA50. Now we are currently recording in 4K on both cameras, so that's why the EOS R is a little more cropped in. I do have it with the 17 to 40 f4L lens, so with that additional crop, it's going to be going to be pretty tight. I would normally use this as a 1080p camera as opposed to doing it as a 4K camera, but the XA50 does not have an additional crop on side of its 4K, so we're doing the same thing. Now I am shooting in C-Log on the EOS R and I'm doing wide dynamic range on the XA50. So both of them are a format that will give you a little more dynamic range in your video and hopefully it looks pretty good. But yeah, so the big thing that I want you to see between the two cameras right now is the stabilization. So the XA50 actually has optical image stabilization built into it, whereas the EOS R has electronic image stabilization. And this lens does not have any IS built in. So how does it look? Can you really tell the difference? Is there a lot more shaking? I'll tell you my shoulders are starting to hurt, so there might be a little bit different of a, uh, there might be some difference between the two. But yeah, I think they are both fantastic video cameras and both could work perfectly fine as a vlogging camera. Look at that. There's a bit of a size difference. The camcorder seems big until you get a full frame camera with a lens and a microphone on top of it. Then it's just like ridiculously heavy. Okay, back to the video. <laughs> and we're back. Yes, the XA50 continues to impress me with both its technical image quality and its extra features outside of just resolution and frame rate. The more I use it, Darn it, the more I like it. But what matters most in this crazy games of algorithms and solo crew productions is ease of use. Who cares about image quality if it's hard to get? Now, I personally split ease of use into pre and post hitting the record button. And for pre-record, both of these cameras are insanely easy to use. Now, I will give setting the camera up to the EOS R. It's got a fully articulating touchscreen that's both big, bright, it's easy to navigate, and it's easy to understand the menu system and change it to what you need it to do. Frankly, I think Canon's menu systems are some of the best. Now, you can learn any system given enough time, but when it comes to quickly changing white balance, ISO, or any of those on the fly, the EOS R is just about the easiest camera ever made. The XA50 is in a weird place where it has both more control and less control at the same time. So you do have some physical buttons, but unlike the C200, one of the other Canon cinema cameras, you don't have physical buttons for everything, and the touchscreen isn't as crisp 
or easy to use as the EOS R. So it's a tad more fiddly to get set up in the first place, especially if you don't speak camcorder because camcorder is a whole different dialect than stills hybrid. Believe you me, it always takes time when I try using a professional camcorder. It takes some time to switch my brain over to that. But do you care more about how easy the camera is to set up when you are in a nice air conditioned office, you know, taking your time, having some coffee, take it just, easily being able to change everything? Or do you want it to be easy to use to get the footage you want when it's 100 degrees outside, the mosquitoes are eating you alive, and all you wanna do is get back indoors to the air-conditioned coffee? I know which one I'd pick. And the XA50 absolutely crushes the EOS R for post-record ease of use. Now, we talked about this last week and even in this specific video, but the XA50 has built-in ND, dual pixel autofocus, stabilization, XLR adapters, wide dynamic range, zebras, histograms, and you can monitor the audio straight from the screen. Like if you could, if you could sit down and write out a list of things that make the perfect camera, this is basically it, except the smaller sensor. I mean, it's not even, cl this is the single easiest camera I have ever used after hitting record. And it beats the Sony NX80 in that category too. It's just so, I'm quickly, quickly getting over my internal prejudices of the camcorder as just a dad's tool for kids sporting events, though it works really well for that too. And as a dad, I can appreciate that. This isn't an objective standard. I mean, none of this video or any of my videos are, but I really just enjoy using the XA50. And because of this single camcorder, we will be bringing more camcorders onto the channel because I have, I know I've said this a lot, I'm repeating myself, I have loved using the XA50 so much that I've considered buying one if I was gonna start doing more and more outside. So you've decided to buy one of these incredibly easy to use high quality cameras. What does the ecosystem slash upgrade path look like? Well, on the one hand, the XA50 needs nothing else. It needs nothing else to function. So you go buy some SD and you are good to go. The EOS R is not like that. It has Canon's currently limited RF mount, but you can adapt the rest of the full frame glass using the Canon's official adapter. That's what we're doing right now. Now you can combine that with some cheap ND and you're also pretty much good to go as well. The EOS R also has cage support if you wanna turn it into something more like the X850 with a bigger sensor. And there are additional accessories that you can get but as with any hybrid camera, if you want the same functionality across cameras, you'll have to bolt on a lot of junk to make that happen. It's not as smooth or as clean of a transition as with the camcorder. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Honestly, the XA50 is objectively the better video camera. It's got all of the functionality and the specs to work better as a dedicated video camera because you know it it is one, it is a dedicated video camera, but it does cost the same amount as the EOS R and the EOS R does have some key advantages over a camcorder. It has lens support. You can make it look almost full frame in 4K. If you want a shallower depth of field, you can get wider open lenses and just shoot in 1080p. Plus online content isn't just a video game, a game about video. No matter where you go, you'll need to take some photos for either social media posts, thumbnails, etc. So I'd argue that if you are only going to have one camera, get the EOS R. It can absolutely run an entire social media enterprise since it's basically a pro level stills camera combined with an almost APS-C level video camera. Now, if you already have a stills camera and just want that sweet, sweet, easy to use goodness, then absolutely get the XA50. It's just awesome. Thanks for watching.